Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Flutter state management course. I'm your host, Van Dat, and I am a Google developer expert for Flutter and Dart. Um, as you might know, state management right now is a very, very hot topic within the Flutter development community, and a lot of people have their uh, likes and dislikes uh, about which systems they prefer to use and which systems they try to stay away from. Uh, and there are also a third category of people where they're very unbiased and they pick basically the tools that fits their um, the description of the job. So in this course, I'm going to stay very neutral. We're going to have a look at a lot of state management tools and systems out there for Flutter, and we're going to have a look at their pros and cons. And what we'll cover in this course, uh, of course, is the built-in state management with um, inherited widget and inherited model. We're going to have a look at provider, flutter hooks, river pop, block binder, mobix, get it, and redox and stacked. And perhaps if, if there's anything that you are interested in, any state management tool out there that you're interested in, which I haven't yet covered here, you're more than welcome to please just let me know and I might actually add it to this course. So one of the reasons I'm going to start this course by having a look at the built-in state management in Flutter is that a lot of these state management tools out there for Flutter are built in on top of um, inherited uh, widget and inherited model. And they're taking advantage of build context, which is like these three things together are the absolute basics of state management in Flutter. So it's these three are like the three pillars on, on top of which a lot of other state management um, systems are built. So we're going to start the course by having a look at the built-in state management in Flutter, and then we're going to build on top of that and have a look at provider, for instance, and then block, etc. So who is this course for? Um, I set the expectation from the beginning of this course that this course isn't for absolute Flutter beginners, in that I expect you to know enough about Flutter to be able to understand like the basics, basic concepts of, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, build context, build functions, um, widgets, inherited uh, inheritance uh, in general, not just inherited because we're going to actually have a look at that. So, if you're an absolute Flutter beginner, this course yet isn't really for you right now. But I do have a free Flutter course available, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. It's available on Linktree uh, slash van.np. And this, this free Flutter course that I'm referring to is actually available on YouTube. But the link I'm providing at the bottom of the screen is kind of like the shortcut to that uh, playlist because it's thirty-five more than 35 hours of uh, videos available freely on YouTube. Uh, but the links provided by YouTube are quite long. So I basically put like a little URL shortener at the bottom of the screen for you. So if you're an absolute Flutter beginner, please do check that uh, playlist out. It is a lot of information available for you freely on YouTube. So, And we will also even talk about block in that course. Um, but we will also talk about block in this course. But we'll de dig a lot more deep in this course into block and many other um, state management solutions out there. So please have a look at that Flutter course, uh, which is available freely if you're a complete Flutter beginner. So what is state management and how come is it so important that we have to have so many videos and so many tutorials on them? Well, state management isn't just important in Flutter. It's something that's important in many other um, like frameworks and program language that you're using. For, for instance, I'm an iOS developer and a Flutter developer. I've worked with Rust and Django as well. And state management is something that's important in pretty much all of these tools that I use on a daily basis. So um, the reason it is important is because it concerns a lot of the layers inside your application. State management is kind of like the glue that brings your entire application logic into place. And with it comes a lot of uh, responsibility and a, and a lot of complexity as well in terms of, for instance, being able to test your application in, in case you're interested in like doing widget tests and integration tests. So it, it solves a lot of issues and with it brings a lot of other complexities into your solution. And that is what uh, that is the reason state management is so important. Picking like the right state management for your uh, problem is even more important than actually knowing all the various other state management. So, um, so I would say it is very important to learn the basics of almost all state managements out there, simply because um, if you know a little bit about all of those state management solutions out there, then you can actually 
have enough information to be able to pick the right state management solution for your next Flutter application. Um, as you've, you may be familiar with uh, with my work before, if you've watched, for instance, the free Flutter course, you'll know that I prefer to write code by hand. But I'm also a fast typer, so it doesn't it doesn't mean that we're going to waste a lot of time actually writing code by hand. But um, I will somehow sometimes um, copy and paste some code, especially if we've written that code before many times. So, for instance, writing. So when we're, as you'll see soon. Um, we won't, for instance, write scaffold applications from scratch every time. So I will teach you how to create like a code snippet for that in Visual Studio Code so that you can basically kind of, kind of like copy paste that code into place every time we create a new application. But from time to time, I will probably copy and paste some code. But I will also always make sure that you understand the code that was pasted and why it was pasted. As I just mentioned briefly, we will create uh, new projects quite a lot in this course because um, we, I mean, I don't want to build one project and then we build all the various state management tools and solutions into the same project. That's just going to be bloatware and no one's going to want to use that. So in this course, what we're going to do is when we go and explore new state management solutions or new ways of doing something with, with an existing state management solution, then we may actually create a completely new Flutter project. And then we're going to put bits and pieces into place and explore that particular topic that we're talking about in that new project so that it is completely isolated from the rest of the code that we've written so far in the course. So uh, just so you're aware of that, we will do a lot of Flutter uh, project creations in this course. Now, as I mentioned also briefly a little bit before, I will be using a custom snippet for, for all our new projects. So I've created a um, YouTube video for you, which is available, and you can just have a look at it, um, in which I'll teach you how to create a Flutter um, project scaffold. Because when you create a new Flutter project, then you're usually ended up with a Flutter application template. And that application template is like a counter project. And a counter project could be um, quite frustrating to work with and clean up before you get to a state that is actually useful for you. So in this video that I provide at the bottom of the screen, you can actually see how we can clean that up uh, and create a code snippet using which then we can reuse that project. So please have a look at that um, video. Now, before we get into the course, um, I mean, I, I would really enj enjoy uh, staying connected with uh, all, all of you. If you're um, planning on taking this course, I'd be really happy to stay connected with you on social media. So please follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn if you want to. I put out quite a lot of content. Um, on the social media platforms that I don't necessarily put on YouTube. So if you'd like to, please follow me on those social media platforms. And also for those of you who have the means to support me, that's the way to do it. If you just go to buymeacoffee.com slash manlab, this is completely um, optional. This course is going to be free for always. But if you have the means to support me, this is the way to do it. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the course.